I mean, yeah. it starts off small, but it yeah. eventually turns into something amazing. I mean, when I started at PragerU, there were 15 people who worked there. And, and now, now we're up to 16, you know? Oh. No, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Nagyon sok szeretettel köszöntöm a kedves heti hetek nézőit és hallgatóit. Én Csermák Debóra vagyok, és a kedves kolléganő társammal Csehó Zsófiával majd egy exkluzív interjút fogunk készíteni, ugyanis a napokban Magyarországra érkezett Will Witt a Danube institute a szervezésében, és az a megtiszteltetésért minket, hogy most egy exkluzív interjút készítettünk vele. A videó feliratozva lesz, úgyhogy mindenki számára elérhető lesz majd a YouTube csatornánkon, és majd a linket is berakjuk, ami az előző interjúnket majd tartalmazza. So, it's uh, so great to welcome you in our studio. So grateful that you joined to us today. It's really great to be here. Thank you so much. And uh, first of all, I thought we could start something personal about how you feel yourself in Hungary. And what is your first impression about the country and the people? I'm loving it so far. Uh, it's definitely different than America. Yeah, that's easily to, to be seen. But it's, it's kind of a culture shock, I'll be honest. You know, seeing some place that has been... We went to the House of Terrors yesterday. And to see the destruction of communism and Nazism in this country and what that's done to this place versus America, where we've never had anything like that, you know? I mean, even though we have people in America who are pushing communist ideals now, it's nothing like that. And so seeing the people here and how they've adapted to that situation, I mean, just, it, it's really heartwarming to see such strong, admirable people like that. So it's definitely a lot different than a lot of the weakness that I think we see from a lot of people in the United States. And how do you feel to be in a post-communist country like Hungary? You know, I'll, I'll be honest, we were, we were driving here on the way and I was talking with Ava and we were, you know, there, there are parts of it that I'm seeing and it's, it's a little disheartening. You know, it's kind of sad that, that the, this amount of destruction and death and sadness could be brought upon people. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, there's something to be said that these people came in with a purpose and they tell people that it's for the greater good when it comes to communism. They always say, oh, we're trying to help people, this is going to be good for you. And every single time it ends in failure, and people die and starve to death, and it's horrible for people. Yet there are still people across the world, in America specifically, that are pushing for these same values. So to be here in a post-modern, post-communist country, and then see people in America say communism is great, it's really an eye-opening experience for me, mm -hmm. something that I've never experienced before. I've never been out of America before. Mm -hmm. This is my first mm -hmm. time ever leaving that country. Wow. So to have Hungary be essentially my, my first visit is, is truly an incredible thing. But it's uh, really interesting. Uh, in Prague, you made uh, several videos about historical topics. When you went out to the street and you were asking people about Second World War or Holocaust and things like that. And for me, it was very shocking to see that so many people just don't know the history. And I think that's a real problem that we're not learning from the history. And maybe that's the case with the socialism as well. So that people are actually seeing that it might be a good idea, but they don't know that in the history it was a failure. Right. Well, you talk to most people in America and they're going to say that socialism means equality. Yeah. Socialism means, uh, it was some people who I talked to, socialism means we're socializing right now, talking to each other. Yeah. I mean, that's the degree of, of, yeah. of knowledge that these people have when it comes to these topics. And the school system, the university system are teaching people that socialism and communism are not that bad. They're telling yeah. them that, oh, it's just these people did it wrong. But if you actually put it into practice, then we could do it right if we had the right people in place. That's what they always say. They say, oh, what happened in, in Russia or China or Venezuela, these aren't real socialism. You know, I'm sure you've heard that yes. before. Yeah. And that type of thinking only leads to a dangerous road mm -hmm. where you put people in power who think, well, this time I'm going to do it right. And if you look at some of the legislation that's being pushed in American Congress by now, by some of these Democrats, you had the, the Build Back Better plan, you had the Green New Deal. These types of plans are essentially Marxist in nature that there are entire forces of government taking over industry and telling people that it's good for them. And so I don't think that most people know the horrors of communism. When I was going through college, if you guys know my story at all, I mean, I was a, a liberal atheist my entire life. I couldn't tell you what communism was. I had no idea what communism was or socialism. No one ever taught me that. I didn't know what a Republican or Democrat was, but I knew that the earth was heating up and we were all going to die and the polar bears were dying and that Obama was pretty cool because he was black. You know, these are the things that I knew. And so the real destruction of something like communism is just not taught in America today. 
And why did you turn to, to God and to faith and to, to believe in something and to have those values that conservatives have? I turned into a conservative before I turned into a Christian. So mm -hmm. I turned into a conservative maybe five years ago mm -hmm. when I started getting really involved on my campus and finding out that all these things that the left has said are a lie and there's so much that's missing from my life. And that's when I became a conservative. Mm -hmm. I didn't become a Christian fully uh, until I got baptized about a year and a week ago uh, in Huntington Beach. And it was because during the pandemic I decided to just sit down and actually read the Bible. I wasn't going to mess around with it anymore, you know, say I'm a Christian but not actually do it. So I said, all right, I'm going to sit down, read the Bible, and I did, and I read the four Gospels. And it was life-changing for me because it was, it was truth right in front of my face. And because I now had that truth, I could not ignore it anymore. And so I decided to get baptized, and it was the greatest decision of my life. And so now it's the, you really find that when you have this backbone of faith, that that drives the politics forward, right? Where before it used to be about, oh, here's the latest political thing about a bill or a candidate running or whatever it might be and now it's like the faith is what drives all of these things forward. It's so good to hear from you because you know there were uh, researches about that under the pandemic time so many people call themselves uh, non-believers and so it's great that in your case it turned out to you came to be a believer but what do you think that why is this tendency that so many people are just turning them selves out of the religion and not believing God? I think that people have made Christianity very easy. Mm -hmm. I think that lots of churches in America come with this like fun Christianity and it's not something that's supposed to be difficult or something that's supposed to be worth your time. There are lots of people in America who say that they're Christians. I mean, you still have million, hundreds of millions of people who say that they're Christians, yeah, right? That's in your but, culture. Yes, yeah, that's in my country, yeah. you know, and, and, but they don't actually practice the faith. They couldn't tell you a verse from the Bible. Or they go to a church, like many of the churches in Los Angeles, they're pro-choice churches. I'll go and the pastor's talking about a woman's right to choose what to do with her body. Hmm. I'm like, that, that is not truth, that is anti-biblical. And so I think that when you take Christianity or any sort of idea really, and you water it down and don't actually put forward the actual tenets of what it represents, you are going to have something that people get disenfranchised by. Yeah. And so then when they can't find any meaning in that because it's fake or it's, it's untruthful or lukewarm, then they mm -hmm. turn to something else and they turn to leftism. They turn to communism and socialism. They turn to climate change catastrophe. They turn to getting 10 booster shots for their two-year-old kid. You know, these are the things that, 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 that they care about. And so it's about breaking people free from that and letting them know that this is what Christianity is really about. This is why our country was founded on Christianity, and this is why it should be important to you, and you should devote your time, even though it's hard, to be a part of it. And uh, what do you think that what are the, the main things that how we can actually to represent very effectively the conservative values? Because sometimes they say that it's too traditional and not so fancy. And uh, actually, Prager, you and you make great videos about to represent it in a cool way. And what are your suggestions actually here in Hungary that how we should do that? Yeah, I, to be honest, I don't know too much about Hungarian media and stuff like that. But I know that in America, we have a crisis of, first of all, masculinity and then a crisis of role models. So you have men who are weak and don't have anyone to look up to. And so in turn, they look to... You know, especially like when the in the black population, they look to rappers and NBA stars, people who are not putting good values out there, and these are yeah. like their new father figures, right? And then women are looking to the same types of people. Mm -hmm. These people are saying, "Oh, you never need to get married. You can do whatever you want. It's you know, focus on your career and never have children." And so you don't have any role models for people to actually look up to to make them feel like conservatism is going to make their lives better. And so if we want to change the culture and make people think that conservatism is the future, you need to give them mo role models that are going to, to make them believe in it, you know? Yeah. Make them feel like this is a good thing that's actually going to affect my life. Because obviously, leftism is way sexier, you know? Watching Game of Thrones is way sexier than watching Lord of the Rings. That's just how, yeah. how it is, right? And so you have to make people realize that Lord of the Rings is better than Game of Thrones, <laughs> mm -hmm. which it is, by far. <laughs> yeah, but but you, you have to convince people of that. Yeah. Because you have, we have eternal values, and sometimes it just feels like that they have the new, and they have these these values that are that are freedom and liberty and everything. How could we just make it renew and make it appealing? 
Yeah, what did they do in China during the Cultural Revolution? They went through all the, the Buddhist temples and old architecture, and they said, this is the, the old stuff. We need to put mm -hmm. in the new things, right? This is what communism did. So when you see these people coming and saying, oh, well, this is all in the past, you know? Traditional marriage, Black Lives Matter saying they want to disband the nuclear family. Those are things in the past we need to just move forward. And so it's about making people realize that these things actually improve their lives. And so what I think has to come first is that you have to get government out of people's lives. Mm -hmm. You have too much government right now, especially in America, like with our welfare system, where people are dependent on the government. They're dependent on the government to tell them now what to do about COVID. They're dependent on the government about what pharmacy, pharmaceutical drugs they should take. I mean, there's so many things that people are just dependent on. There is no free spirit or manifest destiny, as you would call it, in America anymore. And so when people don't feel like they have any freedom, then they're going to disregard old things that worked mm -hmm. because someone else is now taking care of them. So I think that if you can release people from the stranglehold of, of government tyranny and government handouts and all this, then I think you can do a lot of good to make people realize the value in these traditional things. Uh, well, there are, uh, you know, so many topics that nowadays are very important for us, but I think we are not speaking that much about that. For example, climate change is one of them. And uh, I think that most of us think that when we are talking about climate change, it's like, okay, we talk about that, but what we can do to really protect our environment and do um, and make a better future. So what is your suggestion in this? With climate change, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious that the, the free market is the solution for fighting climate change. I mean, think about something like the flash drive, you know, something that you plug into your computer, you can put all your files on, and now you have this, this device with has eliminated all this paper that you had to print before. This wasn't created by, by the EPA or some <laughs> government agency coming with some, yeah. some grant. It, it's coming from a guy who said, I have a great idea, I'm going to make this a possibility, and now you know, it's done. If you go to the third world, you'll find that one of the, the biggest concerns for climate change and also for women's health and, and children's health in those countries is stoves that produce too much smoke and it destroys these people's lives. It destroys their kitchens and everything. And so a company, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the company, it's uh, lost on me now, but they came in and they made stoves that are more environmentally friendly. They have credits so that investors are actually getting carbon credits when they invest, mm -hmm. and it's better and safer for these people, right? And that's a free market. That's no, that's no, no government intervention. Mm -hmm. The government, I mean, Solyndra was a company in America that they invested $500 million into for solar power during the Obama years, and it went bankrupt. That's $500 million of taxpayer money that did nothing and helped no one. Uh, if you want to help the environment, and make it so that these, these, these catastrophes that could potentially happen, according to the left, could, might happen, then you have to look to the free market. The free market is the solution for fixing the climate crisis. But if it comes to climate change, where is the edge between the propaganda and between the, the real problem? It's mostly propaganda. Mm -hmm. I will say that. I mean, the, the, the climate change agenda is something that makes people think that they have some sort of mission in their lives. If you tell people, there, I think they did a study in the UK that 60% of children have climate change related nightmares. Wow. I mean, that, that's a ridiculous stat to have, right? I mean, children having nightmares about apocalyptic tsunamis and hurricanes, and even though nothing is happening. I mean, if you look at the data of natural disasters, the deaths from natural disasters have been going down. Yeah, infrastructure costs might be more, but that's just because we have more buildings. It doesn't actually mean the natural disasters are getting worse. They're actually getting better. And so most of this is just propaganda, uses a fear campaign to convince people that this is something they need to have as a meaning in their life. Again, as God declines in the West, Christianity declines, people still need something. And so they use climate change. And climate change is going to be the, the new thing once the pandemic is over, the COVID pandemic's really over, that they're going to roll in as the the facilitator of the Great Reset. You mentioned the children, and mm -hmm. I think that's a great issue now uh, to, you know, how to teach the children in a way that now the LGBTQ propaganda is now pushing that, uh, you know, this transgender and, and everything. And what do you think that, what would you suggest to the educators and the parents how they can protect the children nowadays? Yeah, well, I love what Hungary has done. I have to say, I, I think that the banning of the content for children and educational materials is a great thing. I wish the people in America would do something like that. I think it's a fantastic thing. I think that parents need to take their kids out of the public schools. 
I think mm. that if you're not going to be able to get it banned or have any sort of legislation, then you need to pull your kids out of the schools and move them somewhere else, either a private school or homeschool them, uh, a boarding school, whatever it might be, so that they don't have to deal with this stuff. Because this stuff is truly evil. I mean, yeah. I go farther than most conservatives and most people in general, that if I see one of these teachers pushing this trans ideology, they should be fired from their jobs immediately and mm. also tried in a, in a court of law for child abuse. If you are coming in as a teacher and telling a kid that he is a different gender because maybe he likes to play with cars instead of, of girls uh, or like yeah. girl toys, you should go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, maybe not go to jail, but you understand <laughs> what I mean. It's, it's insanity. It's insanity yeah. that, that you allow that to happen. It shouldn't be allowed to happen. Yeah. These people need to be held accountable for their actions. And Republicans in Congress and lawmakers in these different states need to come and say, we're not putting up with this anymore. But again, no one in America really has that courage to do that. But I think that it's really uh, one of the signs of the socialism as well, because at that time we can go back to the history and we could see that uh, that was the government who taught the children uh, what, how to think and things like that. And it seems like that the LGBTQ is also doing the same, so that to uh, get them away fr from their parents and say them that how to think about yourself, about your society and everything. So. Maybe it's a sign of, of the socialism as well. Yeah. That, is, that is very true. You're, you're spot on there. I mean, these are Marxist ideas where Marxism comes and breaks down away from the individual and puts you in as a, a, a group of people, yeah. right? It's not about individualism. It's about groups of people. And so the LGBTQ moniker is something that further divides people into one of these segmented intersectional groups. And so if you put people into groups, that means that you can control them. That means you can yeah. tell them what they are supposed to think as a group. They've done that with black people, they've done that with women, transgender, gay people, all this stuff. They put you inside of a group and then if they say, oh, well, you can't think outside this group because if you think outside this group, then you're a pariah and you shouldn't be allowed to think those things. So it is either you stay, as, stay in line with the group as a, a member of some, some pact or you live your life as an individual away yeah. from these types of things. And so, yes, it's, it's quite Marxist. And the, the American public school system is Marxist in, in its intentions already. I mean, the way yeah. it came from the Prussian model in the 1870s, and then by 1911, I believe, every single state had a, a, a public school system. And it doesn't teach children how to be creative or passionate or think or, or be charismatic individuals. It teaches them how to be obedient to authority. It teaches you to raise your hand when you have to go to the bathroom. It teaches you how to, res not respect, but to take orders from someone. That's, that's what the public school system is about. So I'm actually in favor of abol abolishing the public schools. Yeah. I think we should get rid of them entirely. I know that's not a very you know, <laughs> popular idea, and it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But I think that, again, if we want to move forward as a society in a better direction, getting rid of state-run state schools is the first thing to do. And it also reached Hungary too, because we have the same issues. Mm -hmm. We see that that America has has was always a step ahead, and and um, and we've seen what happened with Joe Biden in 2020. Do you think that Mr. Orban Victor um, would be cancelled by foreign forces, or do they want to cancel him? Do they want to mm, dismiss him from from this government? Yes, most definitely they do. I mean, if you read the New York Times, CNN, Washington Post, they reported a lot on what Tucker did with Orban and Tucker Carlson when he came uh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. him on, on Orban. And they, you know, they call it Tucker coming in and supporting a fascist regime, Tucker coming yeah. in and supporting, you know, uh, anti-gay content, you know, all this kind of stuff, just the terrible things. You know, if you only read the New York Times, you would think that Hungary is this dictatorship that's full of just people who are being uh, shoveled in by their government, right? Mm -hmm. A terrible place to be. So I think they do want to cancel him, but I think that he has to continue to stand strong because the more people don't want to cancel him just means the more that he's doing right. So he has to continue True. to stay strong that way. You uh, were spoken about uh, on Monday on uh, your speech to make um, it more international, like Prager Force. Mm -hmm. And so what are your plans in this? Yeah, so PragerU, as a digital media company, we are already na international. So, I mean, you guys, you're in Hungary, you've seen the videos, so yes. you know it's international. <laughs> and PragerForce as well, our student program, is international too. I, we have, uh, you guys should join. You know, oh, PragerForce? Yes, exactly. But besides PragerForce, do you, do you plan to make something uh, 
the international network or something? You know, we would love to. We would love to do more. We've done some translations in Spanish for some of our videos for reaching a larger audience. But, you know, we want to reach everyone around the world. But I think that, at least for me and some of the other people at PragerU, our, our first goal is America, that, w that we are making things for America. That's where we're based. That's why, where we want to help, because we feel like America is the last best hope for the world. If America flourishes, the rest of the world will surely flourish in a way based off the influence that we have. And so we focus mostly on America as much as we would like to get out and do more stuff internationally and continue to expand as, you know, I'm here in Hungary doing all this and going across yeah. Europe doing more speeches and everything. Uh, it, it's, it's not top of mind as our major priority. And could you tell us a story about convincing a liberal, the best story that you have or the favorite one? Mm -hmm. Sure. I had one the other day that I was speaking at an event in Cal State Fullerton and a guy came up to me and he said, hey, do you remember me? I was like, oh God, should I remember you? <laughs> He's like, no, 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 I was in one of your videos like three years ago. I was like, oh, which one? He's like, well, you came and you interviewed me and you asked me who the vice president was and I didn't know who the vice president was and then you put me in the video. I said, oh, okay, I think I remember you. And he's like, yeah, well, that video came out and I was really embarrassed by you know, not knowing who the vice president was and everything. And I decided to start looking at PragerU videos and looking at your videos and everything. And I got your book and read that. And it, it, he said it was life changing for him. And now he's the one who's going and quizzing all of his friends on all of the conservative values and ideas. And, you know, it, it's, that's one story. And it's, it's one of, of so many. And I don't want to sound vain, but I'm, I'm incredibly excited about all the work that we do at PragerU and myself because we're getting so many messages every single day saying, mm -hmm. you changed my life from being a leftist to a conservative, or you made me find God again, or you, you instilled in me the bravery to fight for the conservative values I've always had. It, it's every single day, and it's a beautiful thing to see mm -hmm. that so many people are inspired by what we do. It means that we're doing something right, and we definitely have a lot of haters. So it definitely yeah. means we're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. people people are trying to mm, dismiss and, and try to debunk uh, your your ideas and your your thoughts mm -hmm. in YouTube. And I was like, why 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 are they doing this? Like, of course they are liberals and everything. Yeah. And they want to destroy it. You know, people. It's like people call me a racist or a sexist or anti-vax, whatever it is. It's like they they say that because they don't have an argument against the ideas. I ask them, I say, come and give me an argument against any of the ideas that I'm talking about. And they don't give me arguments. They just make these, these ad hominem attacks and try and call me some horrible thing, do the same thing to Dennis. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. Where there used to be a time where I think conservatives would hear people call them a racist and, well, there still are people who are conservative and do this and they get very scared and they try and backpedal so that people don't say those things about them and they try and be very moderate. Mm -hmm. Whereas now someone like Dennis Prager or myself, I, I mean, we don't care at all. That's, that's just what you have to deal with, you know, because that's what they're going to continue to say. And the more people who say these things about you, again, it feels like the more good that I'm actually doing. I think one of the things is that really uh, important is to have arguments. Because yeah. sometimes what I see is that in the liberal side, that they have these ideologies and they think that they, they know the answer for everything. And you would like to start a conversation, but they are not open to that. So in these cases, what is your, your way to a solution? Yeah, you know, this is what I actually wrote my book about, about changing people's minds and how to win friends and influence enemies. Because I think that that is the most important thing that individuals can do if they're not you know, running for office or, or being some person outspoken on social media. They can go and talk to anyone. There's, there's nothing stopping them. It's free. It's easy. It takes a little yeah. bit of practice, of course, yeah. but you can go and do that. And by doing that, you are asking people questions. You know, you, you use the word uh, argue before, but I would just use the word conversation. Yeah. That you're going and having conversations with people who you disagree with, trying to change their mind. You are asking them questions, and the questions have the facts weaved into them. Because imagine, it, it's not necessarily you changing that person's mind, it's them changing their own mind because they can't answer the questions that you gave them. Right? Yeah. And that, that's the difference. Is that I'm not going and just shouting facts at someone. I'm asking them questions to genuinely hear what they have to say. And that's the number one strategy to change minds. Yeah, because what we can see is that the mainstream media is, you know, pushing these uh, ideas and ideologies to the people. And it's easy to follow that because you don't have to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... Of it's course, it's much easier to be in the majority and not yeah. have to think about 
the, the answers to these questions than yeah. actually be someone who's brave and standing up for something. Yeah. And what would be your advice to inspire young people in Hungary and in Europe to be active in politics, in, in social life, and, and, and stand up and stand firm in, in conservative values? The, the advice that I can give is kind of more broad, but you can just adapt it to every part of your life, is never sacrificing your values for anyone or anything. It, it's, when, when I was in college, and again, I dropped out of college, but when I was in my political science courses, I mean, every single day in those classes, I would have my hand up, arguing with the professor, arguing mm -hmm. with the other kids. All the other students hated me because I always raised my hand, but I wasn't going to let this professor say lies in my class every day. I just wasn't going to allow it to happen, right? And so because of that, I would have kids come up to me after class and be like, hey man, like, I love the things you said, I agree with you, but I'm just, I'm too scared to say it. You know, and I'm like, well, uh, th that's your problem. You know, you need, you need to figure it out. You need yeah. to understand that this is a, a battle. It's, we're in a civil war of ideas in this country, uh, and I think in Hungary as well, all over the world we're in a civil war of ideas. And the only way to fight back against that is to not sacrifice for any of these people who want you to apologize for what you believe in or apologize for saying something strong. You continue to do so no matter what, and I can guarantee you that even if you lose things in the short run, which will happen, people will despise you and you might lose some opportunities for being strong. The things that you gain in the long run by standing up for truth and the values that you believe in far surpasses anything else. Thank you, yeah, well, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>